Good morning slash afternoon slash evening, everyone. Today, I'd like to take you on a journey through time, a journey through the history of one of mathematics' most intriguing puzzles, the search for prime factors. The concept of prime numbers and factorization has fascinated mathematicians for millennia. We start with the ancient Greeks, who were among the earliest civilizations to ponder the mysteries of numbers. Around 300 BCE, Euclid laid the groundwork in his elements by proving that there are infinitely many prime numbers. He also described what we know today as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which states that every number can be broken down into a unique combination of prime factors. The Greeks were fascinated by primes, seeing them as the building blocks of all numbers, a kind of atomic structure within mathematics. However, while they developed a rigorous understanding of the properties of primes, they didn't have algorithms to efficiently factor large numbers, largely because their arithmetic was done by hand. Simultaneously, ancient civilizations in India were making strides in understanding number theory. By around the 5th century, Indian mathematicians like Aryabhata had advanced arithmetic, laying the foundation for understanding number properties that would eventually lead to modular arithmetic a key concept in factorization and modern cryptography. The Siddhanta, Indian astronomical texts, reveal remarkable methods to handle large numbers, crucial in early factorization attempts. While the Indians had some understanding of prime numbers, like the Greeks, they lacked the computational means to decompose very large numbers quickly. Moving east to China, ancient Chinese scholars contributed significantly with algorithms like the remainder theorem. Their work laid early foundations for what we now call modular arithmetic, useful for solving equations with large numbers, a concept tied closely to the properties of primes and factors. However, like the Greeks and Indians, they were constrained by manual computation and focused more on practical problems than on the theoretical aspects of factorizing primes. The pursuit of prime factorization took on new life in the 17th and 18th centuries in Europe. Mathematicians such as Pierre de Fermat and Carl Friedrich Gauss explored number theory rigorously. Fermat's attempts led to the development of Fermat's Little Theorem, which has applications in prime testing. However, even with this new era of exploration, prime factorization for large numbers remained elusive. Fast forward to the 20th century. The field of number theory exploded with the invention of computers. Finally, mathematicians and cryptographers could explore factorization beyond the limits of manual calculation. However, as we developed more powerful computational tools, the cryptographic world took notice. By the late 1970s, the RSA algorithm emerged based on the difficulty of factoring large semi-prime numbers. Today, RSA and similar cryptographic systems protect vast amounts of sensitive information online from emails to financial transactions. Despite advances in computing, we still face enormous challenges in factorizing very large numbers. Some progress has been made and specialized algorithms such as the general number field SIV have emerged. However, factorizing numbers with hundreds of digits remains a monumental challenge, one that even today's fastest supercomputers would take years to solve. Recently, researchers are experimenting with novel approaches and alternative algorithms that, while not yet breaking RSA-level cryptography, are exploring new possibilities. Quantum computing, for instance, introduces a potential for breakthroughs with algorithms like Shor's algorithm, which could factor large numbers exponentially faster than classical computers. Yet, practical quantum computers remain in their infancy, giving us some time to further secure and innovate. Today. I will discuss a novel factorization approach that takes advantage of properties in prime factor distribution, exploring possibilities that could impact modern cryptography if developed further. This historical journey reminds us that while the problem of factorization has roots in ancient history, it remains as vital and challenging as ever. Thank you for the opportunity to present a fresh perspective on a topic at the heart of modern cryptography prime factorization, and its role in securing data through algorithms like RSA. Today, I want to discuss a novel approach to factorization that, while fundamentally different from traditional methods, highlights some potential vulnerabilities in cryptographic protocols relying on the supposed intractability of factorizing large composite numbers. 
Introducing the factorization method. Our method introduces an interesting angle to factorization by combining classical number theoretic techniques with a unique filtering mechanism based on the sum of digits. We begin with a random large integer, similar to what you'd find in RSA keys. And instead of conventionally testing every potential factor, we leverage a magic constant, dynamically generated as a string of nines. This constant, tailored to each number's size, serves as a comparative baseline for the sum of digits and potential factors. The algorithm then iterates over potential divisors, but instead of exhaustively testing each one, it first filters candidates based on whether their sum of digits is lower than the target number's modified digit sum. This check allows us to bypass a significant portion of non-factors, improving efficiency and refining our focus to more likely candidates. This approach not only provides a novel way to analyze divisibility, but also avoids the computational costs associated with iterating through all numbers up to the square root of the target. By combining these methods, we achieve a more targeted exploration of factors and can even recursively apply this process to break down each factor into its prime components, ultimately revealing the prime structure of the number. Implications for RSA and similar cryptographic algorithms. This innovation raises an important question. Could such filtering mechanisms and dynamic constant checks offer a new route to cracking RSA or similar cryptographic algorithms? RSA security fundamentally relies on the difficulty of prime factorization. Specifically, the RSA algorithm leverages the mathematical relationship between two large prime numbers multiplied to form a public modulus. Traditional methods of factorization, including trial division, the Pollard row method, and even the general number field sieve, all scale inefficiently as the numbers grow. RSA capitalizes on this inefficiency, especially as modulus sizes increase, making decryption computationally impractical without the private key. However, our algorithm highlights a potential vulnerability. The reliance on specific classes of divisors and properties of digit sums introduces a heuristic dimension to factorization. If further optimized, this approach could present a new avenue for accelerating factorization in large integers, undermining the RSA assumption that factorization is computationally prohibitive. Potential risks and the future of cryptographic security. If such an algorithm could indeed be optimized to handle the large key sizes RSA typically uses, this could signal a need to rethink our approach to cryptographic security. While our method alone may not immediately crack the RSA algorithm, it points to the possibility that further research into heuristic-based factorization could, over time, compromise the robustness of factorization-based encryption. This highlights an important vulnerability. As factorization methods evolve, they may eventually outpace the RSA's assumed security margins, prompting a shift to either larger key sizes or entirely different cryptographic approaches. Already. Post-quantum cryptography is being explored to defend against potential future advancements that could challenge RSA and similar algorithms. Conclusion In conclusion, this novel approach to factorization may represent the early stages of a new class of factorization techniques. While the full impact of this method remains to be seen, it exemplifies the kind of innovation that could reshape the cryptographic landscape. As we continue to probe and test the boundaries of number theory, we must remain vigilant about the security implications such methods could hold. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to further discussions on how this technique and others like it could impact the future of cryptographic security. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed mathematicians and curious minds, today, I'm here not only to present an innovative factorization algorithm, but also to make a heartfelt appeal. Some of you may know that for years, I have been deeply invested in one of mathematics' greatest unsolved problems, the Riemann hypothesis. I firmly believe that I have cracked it, revealing a new path to understanding the prime number distribution. I recognize the skepticism that surrounds any claim regarding the Riemann hypothesis. So many attempts have come and gone, and the mystery remains unsolved. Yet, I am here to ask you to read my proof with an open mind, to study it with the same care and seriousness as you would any established mathematical work. This algorithm, which I am sharing today, didn't come out of thin air. 
It emerged from the very concepts and breakthroughs that are central to my proof. I can say with absolute conviction that without the insights I gained from my work on the Riemann hypothesis, this novel approach to factorization would never have come to me. Imagine a world where we finally understand the hidden pattern of primes, where we no longer need to rely on the assumptions of randomness in their distribution. My work, if you take it seriously, could be a key to this world. I believe that by exploring and validating this proof together, we have the potential to unravel a profound truth about the mathematical universe. I ask each of you to consider this possibility, to study my proof in earnest, and to allow for the chance that a significant breakthrough has truly been made. Thank you for your time, your dedication to discovery, and your willingness to look beyond the familiar boundaries of mathematics. Good morning slash afternoon slash evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today to share with you a fascinating new algorithm I have been working on. As many of you may know, prime factorization has long been a crucial challenge in number theory, with deep implications in fields like cryptography, particularly in the security of RSA encryption. For centuries, mathematicians from ancient Greece, India, China, and beyond have explored this problem, but it remains a key focus in both theoretical and applied mathematics to this day. As we know, the RSA algorithm, used to secure communications across the internet, relies on the difficulty of factoring large numbers into primes. This makes prime factorization an important aspect of modern cryptography. However, with advances in computing and algorithms, we find ourselves continuously revisiting the way these problems are approached. And that brings me to the algorithm I am presenting today, a novel approach that might significantly improve the way we factorize numbers. I have designed an algorithm that I believe is up to 1,000 times faster than traditional factorization methods. The idea is simple yet powerful. By using a dynamic constant based on the number's length and incorporating optimizations, such as checking for divisibility by small primes up front, we can drastically speed up the factorization process. But don't just take my word for it. I'd love for you to try it out and test its performance. Here's how you can get started. How to run the code. 1. Install Python. If you don't already have Python installed, head over to python.org. HTTPS colon slash slash www.python.org slash downloads and download the latest version. Follow the installation instructions for your operating system. 2. Install required libraries. This algorithm requires a few libraries to run smoothly. Open a terminal or command prompt and type the following commands to install them. pip install math. pip install random. pip install time. 3. Download the Python code. You can find the code in the video description. Copy and paste the code into Notepad and save as a new.py file. 4. Run the code. Open your terminal or command prompt and navigate to the folder where your Python file is located. Run the following command. Python.py. The script will run 100 test cases by default, generating random numbers and factorizing them according to my novel algorithm. After the tests are completed, you'll see the total processing time and the average time per iteration. Feedback and poll. I'm excited to hear what you think about the algorithm's performance. If you find that it's as fast as I claim, 1,000 times faster than traditional methods, I'd appreciate it if you could share your results and thoughts with me. Additionally, you can give me feedback on whether this algorithm meets the promise of a Christmas gift, as I promised in my opinion poll. So, Please take a moment, let me know if you think this algorithm is as groundbreaking as I do. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Your feedback will be invaluable in refining this algorithm further, and perhaps even unlocking new potential in the world of cryptography and computational mathematics. Happy testing, and happy holidays!